Okay, so for this problem, we're going to be working with the parallel axis theorem and the moment of inertia of a ball. The full problem is written in the description below this video. So we're asked to consider a ball of radius r with constant density uh, where m is obviously the total mass and v is the volume of the ball. So we're supposed to use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia of the ball about an axis which is a distance d from the center of the ball. So I've already written the parallel axis theorem down for us. But basically it says that that moment of inertia around an axis some distance from the object is equal to the moment of inertia of the object when the axis is through its center of mass plus md squared, where d is the distance from the center of mass of the ball to the axis it's rotating around, and m is still mass. So let's recall how we find moment of inertia. really big. Okay, so our moment of inertia is given by the triple integral over the volume of our area region. Um, it's the integral of r squared times density, where r is the distance to the axis we're rotating around. So we know that we're given a constant density. So I can replace this density with m over v and I'm going to pull it out of the integral. Okay, now let me go ahead and draw this sphere we're working with. So I'm given a little bit of freedom as far as what axis I want the ball to rotate around. So I'm going to put it through the z-axis just for simplicity. So now the r of cylindrical coordinates will match this r distance to the z-axis. So this poses a little bit of a challenge as far as finding the bounds of integration for z. But I can think about what my z would be by using the Pythagorean theorem. So I can make a little bit a little triangle to find the z for any point on the sphere. So obviously the horizontal component is going to be z, and then the hypotenuse is going to be big R, you know, whatever the radial distance is. And then the horizontal component is going to be the variable R, distance to the z-axis. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I get... little r squared plus z squared equals big R squared. So I can solve for z. And get that z is the square root of big R squared minus little r squared. So the positive half of this square root covers the top hemisphere. And then the negative square root covers the bottom half. So those are my two bounds for z. And let's set up this integral. So I want to integrate with respect to z first because this, these boundaries are a function of r. And then we know r is given to be big R. So if I'm integrating with respect to r, it's going to be from 0 to big R. And then theta, the sphere goes all the way around, so it's just 0 to 2 pi. So now I have this r squared, and that's just going to stay the same. But then for dv, I have to think about what the volume element is in cylindrical coordinates. And it's r dr dz d theta. So I'm going to change that r squared to an r cubed, and then add everything else in. Okay, now let's go ahead and start by integrating with respect to z. Well, r cubed is just going to be like a constant, so when I integrate, I'm going to get r cubed z.
Okay, so now I want to evaluate this from z equals negative square root of r squared minus r squared to z equals positive square root of r squared minus r squared. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So I have r cubed times the square root of big R squared minus little r squared, and then I'm going to subtract r cubed times the negative square root of that. So basically adding this term twice. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a 2 in front of it. And now I'm ready to integrate with respect to r. But looks like I need a u substitution. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to say that u is equal to big R squared minus little r squared. And that makes du negative 2r dr. So let's rewrite this. I'm going to take that square root and make it u to the 1 half. And then I can cancel out 1r and the 2. To change the dr to a du. Now I still have a minus sign that I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and switch those bounds of integration to make it a little bit easier. Okay. But now I have to rewrite these bounds because I'm working with u now. So I'm going to plug in 0 for r and see what I get for u. So I have u equals big R squared minus 0. So that top bound is going to be big R squared. Now let's plug in big R and see what we get. So then u will equal big R squared minus big R squared, so just 0. But now I still have this extra R squared that's hanging out, and I don't really have a way to integrate that. So let's try to use this u substitution to rewrite it into something we can use. I'm going to solve this original expression that we wrote for u in terms of R squared and see what I get. So I have r squared equals big R squared minus u. Well, big R squared is just a constant, and u is over integrating with respect to. So that works. We can make that substitution. So now I have r squared minus u times u to the 1 half. Well, let me go ahead and distribute. So I have r squared u to the 1 half minus u to the 3 halves, du, d theta. So now we're ready to integrate. When I integrate u to the 1 half, I'm going to get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And when I integrate u to the 3 halves, I'm going to get u to the 5 halves times 2 fifths. Okay, and now I'm going to evaluate from u equals 0 to u equals big R squared. And our circle is going to have to go. Okay, let's go ahead and start by plugging in R squared. So I'm going to get 2 R squared times r squared to the 3 halves, which is going to give me r to the third times r squared, so 2 thirds r to the fifth. And then here I'm going to plug in an r squared, 
and r squared to the 5 halves becomes r to the 5th. And then when I plug in 0, both of my terms drop out. So now I'm just integrating 2 thirds r to the 5th minus 2 fifths r to the 5th with respect to theta. First, let's try to combine these terms. So I'm going to write them with a common denominator. Right, so I have 10 fifteenths minus 6 fifteenths, which gives me 4 fifteenths, r to the fifth. Okay, now let's go ahead and integrate with respect to theta. This whole term is a constant, so when I integrate, I'm just going to get 4 fifteenths r to the fifth theta. And then, let's evaluate that from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi. Well, let's plug in 2 pi first. And then now when I plug in theta equals 0, the second term drops out. So this is all I have to work with. And at this point, we need to go ahead and plug in that volume for this sphere. So remember, the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And here we don't have a numerical value for r, but we know it's that big capital R. So I'm going to go and plug that into this expression. And now I have a lot of canceling out to do. So first, let's do the pies, and then the fours. And I can take three r's from both, so I'm left with r squared on top. And the 3 and the 15 can cancel out to make 1 fifth. So if I rewrite this, I'm looking at two m r squared over five. Okay, now let's take this back to that parallel axis theorem. So that 2m r, r squared over 5 is going to be this portion of it. So plug it in. And now I don't really have anything to kind of add together because I don't have like terms. And we're not given a specific distance for d, so d is just going to stay as a variable. But I can pull 1m out. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is going to be my moment of inertia. m times quantity 2r squared over 5 plus d squared. 